from Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School, and with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. My name is Father Michael Bush. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from Diane and Paul from Surrey, British Columbia. This Mass is offered for their living and deceased family members, for their own personal intentions, and in thanksgiving for the daily TV Mass. On behalf of all the faithful across Canada gathered for this celebration, we thank you, Diane and Paul, for this gift. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son we may abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. After Nineveh was spared, Jonah was displeased and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord and said, O Lord, is not this what I said while I was still in my own country? That is why I fled to Tarshish at the beginning, for I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and ready to relent from punishing. And now, O Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, is it right for you to be angry? Then Jonah went out of the city and sat down east of the city and made a booth for himself there. He sat under it in the shade, waiting to see what would become of the city. The Lord God appointed a bush and made it up come to cover up Jonah, to give shade over his head to, shave, to save him from discomfort. So Jonah was very happy about the bush. But when dawn came up the next day, God appointed a worm that attacked the bush so that it withered. When the sun rose, God prepared a sultry east wind, and the sun beat down on the head of Jonah so that he was faint and asked that he might die. He said, it is better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about the bush? And Jonah said, yes, angry enough to die. Then the Lord said, you are concerned about the bush for which you did not labor and which you did not grow. It came into being in a night and perished in a night. And should I not be concerned about Nineveh, that great city, in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their right hand from their left, and also many animals. The word of the Lord. Lord, you are tender and full of love. Lord, you are tender and full of love. You are my God, be gracious to me, O Lord, for to you do I cry all day long. 
gladden the soul of your servant. For to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Lord, you are tender and full of love. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love to all who call on you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my cry of supplication. Lord, you are tender and full of love. All the nations you have made shall come and bow down before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. For you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. Lord, you are tender and full of love. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. You have received the Spirit which makes us God's children, and in that Spirit we call God our Father. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. Jesus said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us, and do not bring us to the time of trial. The Gospel of the Lord. Some years ago, I was talking to a parishioner about how he was coping as a recovering alcoholic. I asked him, what is the difference between the way you are now and the way you were when you were drinking? I still have problems, he said, but now I realize that I have to stop trying to change everybody else and that the real change has to come from inside of me. Success in life depends on my attitude. He explained to me how he previously blamed other people for his troubles and how he often felt sorry for himself because of all the troubles he had to face. I have come to a new understanding of myself and a new dependence on God, he said. Then he put it all together in one easy to remember sentence. The proper attitude towards God is gratitude for grace received and the proper attitude towards people is forgiveness. That's what Christ was driving at in the Lord's Prayer when he taught his disciples to pray. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. One woman told me that every Sunday as she prayed the Lord's Prayer in church, this particular phrase got stuck in her throat. 
She found that she frequently coughed when she started to say, as we forgive. What if God treated us exactly as we treat our neighbors, she said. None of us would have any hope at all. But the petition does not mean that God is going to treat us exactly as we treat others. But it certainly does mean that when God forgives us, he expects us to reflect his forgiveness in our relationship with others. When we try to hoard God's grace and fail to give it away, we lose it. When we try to keep forgiveness to ourselves, it too slips away. There are three basic ingredients in forgiveness, justice, mercy, and grace. Justice means you get what you deserve. Mercy means not getting what you deserve. And grace means getting what you do not deserve. Forgiveness is not a substitute for justice. When there is no genuine repentance or no gratitude for forgiveness, justice must be done. The person who is not grateful for the grace of God may end up being punished severely. What we sow, we reap. The unforgiving person will eventually get just what they deserve. Yet God's mercy may still prevail, and that unforgiving person may not get what they truly deserve, but instead is given forgiveness. True forgiveness goes beyond even mercy, all the way to grace. When God is merciful and does not give us the punishment we deserve, we get a clean slate, a chance to start our life again, debt-free. Grace is God's free gift to the undeserving, and our gratitude for such grace should make us want to pass it on to others. God always acts first with forgiveness. Only then does he expect us to reflect his mercy. But God's grace is not conditional. Jesus does not say that God will only be good and merciful to us if we are good and merciful to others. God is merciful and gracious no matter what we do. But if we don't share God's mercy and grace, we lose it. And the debt we owe him far exceeds any debt that any person owes to us. When we fail to take heart, Jesus' words, forgive us as we forgive, then our unforgiving spirit slams the door in God's face. The natural tendency of humans is to be good to those who are good to us in return and to try to get even to those who hurt us. This orientation towards relationship is the heart of the matter. The heart and center of Jesus' teaching is love for one's enemies, forgiveness instead of retaliation. Reciprocity is wrong, whether it is a wife punishing her husband with a silent treatment so he will realize just how much he has hurt her, or a husband who tries to get even by staying out late at the office or going out drinking with his buddies, whether it's former friends repaying hurts with slander and gossip, or parents and children trying to get even with each other for petty hurts. We are all involved in playing that self-defeating game of reciprocity. That is why, as we forgive, is so important in this prayer. Without an attitude of forgiveness, the endless screw of retaliation goes on turning, generating even more and more hurt. 
The proliferation of sin continues when people neglect the meaning of the Lord's Prayer or just say the words with no intention of ever putting them into action or trying to foster a forgiving attitude towards others. To be willing to forgive those who hurt you means having an attitude like God has towards you. We have no control over whether those who have offended us repent, but we have control over whether or not we are willing to forgive. To be sensitive to other people's problems and limitations is to act as God acts towards you. It means thinking with the mind of Christ and seeing with the eyes of Christ. That is what grace and forgiveness are all about. Let us now open our hearts in thankful praise to God for the healing grace his Son offers us. For the month of October, we pray for our daily TV Mass community, that each of us would do a little something every day to help change the world and make it a better place. We pray to the Lord. Amen. That God will be our guide and our strength as we let go of our hurts and offer the Lord's Prayer for forgiveness. We pray to the Lord. Amen. That firmly rooted in the presence of Christ, we will find positive ways to serve God and our neighbor. We pray to the Lord. That we may offer Christ's mercy and forgiveness to others and so gain entry into the kingdom of heaven. We pray to the Lord. That the souls of the faithful departed be forgiven and that they will find peace in the presence of Christ our Savior. We pray to the Lord. Almighty Father, help us to see and open our hearts to you, and with open hands, be a loving example of forgiveness for others. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Oh yes. God, we ask you to see these we offer you with humble, contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, 
His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. And his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. Please remember that all requests for prayers are included in our Prayer Intentions book and shared with all of our celebrants. Lord.